All righty, Pickle. Let's talk a little bit about UTEP. The Miners. The Mighty Miners. I, I know that uh, Houston made a hire as well. We're going to talk about that tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But uh, we've been we've been putting off talking about press UTEP for a minute. Going on now. Yeah, we've been talk putting off talking about UTEP here for a minute, and, and I want to make sure we close the book on Dana Dimmel and open the book on their new coach. So Dana Dimmel is out after six seasons at the helm of the UTEP Miners with a 20 and 49 mark. It was 10 and 34 in conference play. And again, one of the things that happens whenever a coach gets fired is we kind of reduce him to his record. And to be clear, you are what your record says you are. There's no putting lipstick on a pig, right? At some point, you got to win ball games, and if you're just talking about Dana Dimmel, he didn't win enough ball games. That's a, that's a, the sad truth of it. Um, I like Dana Dimmel. I like him personally. He's mm -hmm. been a friend of Dave Campbell's Texas football. I'm sorry to see him go, but I understand why they did it. They go three and nine this year. He had a losing record in five of his six seasons. They did go to the uh, they did go seven and five in 2021 which was impressive. And 7-5 and in 2021, the loss in New Mexico Bowl. <sighs> I think the biggest issue with Dana Dimmel at UTEP is kind of something, it was, it was one of the things that it was in the walls whenever he was hired. And not the walls at UTEP, it kind of came part and parcel with hiring a guy like Dana Dimmel. Dana Dimmel, you may remember, he's a Bill Snyder guy. Mm -hmm. Worked for Bill Snyder, offense coordinator for Bill Snyder twice. Right? First in the 90s before he got hired at Wyoming and Houston. Then he made it back to Kansas State to work for him again. He is a Bill Snyder guy. And Bill Snyder runs a style of offense, ran a style of offense, he's not coaching anymore, at Kansas State. That is running game and defense, and it's just kind of old school. It's an old school way of doing business. And that was always going to be the way that he wanted to, he wanted to run it. He wanted to run a hard-nosed physical style of football mm -hmm. and grind it out and play great defense. I'm not here to tell you that that can't work. In 2023. Because I think it can. I think in some ways. It's kind of what Georgia does. Mm -hmm. You know. It can. But the difference. I hope I don't need to illustrate this. But the difference between UTEP and Georgia. Is that Georgia. Can go out and get five star offensive linemen. Yes. And five star running backs. And five star linebackers. And that is a harder needle to thread at UTEP, which has, as we've talked about on this program before, institutional and geographic, not institutional, what I mean is like baked in challenges. Mm -hmm. Getting recruits to go to El Paso is tough. Mm -hmm. It is only going to get tougher. I'm not trying to be the bearer of bad news here. It is only going to get tougher with their conference situation. As Conference USA, in my opinion, continues to tumble down to be the probably the lowest ranked conference in the state in the nation, right? That's why it's a little surprising Liberty got into the got into the New Year's Six. Yep. Right? Because this is now the transition league. Right? Sam Houston, Jacksonville State. They are they are piecemealing it together. They're adding Delaware, right? It is only going to get more difficult. And so for Dana Dimmel, I think he ran into a number of circumstances that would not allow them to take that next step. Part of that, I want to be clear, I'm not absolving, I'm not saying he's a victim of circumstance. No. You have to adapt. You have to change. You have to find a way through. And it just didn't happen. Um, 
I think UTEP. I think you can win at UTEP. Maybe I'm in the minority here. I don't think you can. I I don't. I don't know if you can win a national championship, but I think especially in this new conference USA, I think you can. You can challenge for the top tier there. And UTEP did not appear to be heading that direction. And as a result, Dana Dimmel is out after six seasons at the head co- as a head coach at UTEP. They have now made another hire. Came down today. Mike Craven confirmed it on TexasFootball.com that the new head coach of the UTEP Miners will be Scotty Walden. Scotty Walden will be the new head coach of the UTEP Miners. Scotty Walden is a name that you know if you are... That is a football sicko Rorschach test. Mm -hmm. Okay? If you know who Scotty Walden is, you're a football sicko. And I love you. Thank you for watching this program. But Scotty Walden has been one of those names that's been kind of on that undercurrent hipster names for a while. Scotty Walden is leaving his his post as the head coach at Austin P. Mm-hmm. He's been the head coach at Austin P in the FCS ranks for the last couple of years. Since 2020 was when he took over. Uh, I guess 2021 was his first. Well, no, it's weird. So here's the, th- we'll, we'll go through his whole, whole biography. Okay. In Texas, you may know him as former Cleburne quarterback, Scotty Walden. Mm-hmm. I would need to do some math here, but no, nah, he's too he's too old for me to have covered him. But he played at a variety of different places. He played at Hardin Simmons, played at Sol Ross before he got into coaching. He's the office coordinator at Sol Ross in twenty twelve when he was twenty three. Yeah, that's crazy. He's thirty four right now, by the way. He just turned thirty four. That's he's by far insane. the young he's yeah, he's younger than GJ Kenny, right? Ooh. No. Ooh. Hold on. GJ Kenny's 35. 35. He's okay, younger well. than GJ Kenny. Wow. Well. How's that? He's younger than Eric Morris, right? Yes. Yeah, Eric Morris is 38. Like 38. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Now we got a bunch of guys in their 30s. Ha <laughs> ha. My people. Um He was Not for much longer. In I don't appreciate you. <laughs> over the hill. He moved over to East Texas Baptist. In 2013, and then became their head coach in 2016. He was the head coach in 2016, at which point he kind of got noticed. They went seven and three in his first year there, his first and only year at East Texas Baptist. Then he goes over and he becomes the receivers coach at Southern Miss. Starts joining at, at Southern Miss uh, under Jay Hobson. Okay. Now here's where it gets weird. He kind of works his way up through the through the the ranks. And then he does the ultra rare thing that can that I think can only happen once, which is he coached for two different teams in the same season. In 2020, he took over as the interim head coach at Southern Miss. Mm-hmm. Okay, interim head coach at Southern Miss finished this finished out the string with a bad team. They went one and three, whatever. He then gets hired in October. While he is still at Southern Miss, he gets hired at Austin P. He then takes over and coaches at Austin P in the spring season, mm-hmm. in the COVID year. Yep. He's been at Austin P now for three seasons. Four seasons, I should say. And he's 26 and 14 at, at Austin P. He is a young, he is ticking a lot of boxes of the guy, of, of the girlfriend that is entirely the opposite of the guy the the girl you just got dumped by. Mm-hmm. Okay? Or you dumped, I should say. He is young, all due respect to our friend yeah. Dana Demo, but he is almost 30 years his junior. Mm-hmm. And he runs a dynamic offense. Yep. They are going to spread it out and throw it around. They want to play an exciting brand of football. Mm-hmm. They want to play an exciting brand of football. And it might not be a lot um to say about it now because the conference is so different, but he does have experience in Conference USA. He does. And it's a very different he does. Conference USA. Different. But yes, uh, he is a he's a two time conference champion. He won the A Sun in 2022, and he won the UAC this year in 2023. They lost in the first round of the playoffs. Um, 
he is, again, like I said, it's a football sicko Rorschach test, but he's a name that's been kicking around as like a hot young name coming up through the ranks. And now he gets a shot at the FBS ranks. Um, this is very different for UTEP. And especially, I don't know that they have ever had a guy, I need to look through their history, they certainly, in the in the spread era, right? In the spread era, they have not had a coach who wants to spread it around, who wants to throw it around. No. Mike Price didn't want to do that a little bit, but certainly more than the last two. Sean Kugler and uh, Dana Dimmel were there ground and pound the year, guys. They were the, offensive line guys, basically. The year that UTEP went bowling, they had the really good receiver. So they they, th they would throw they it a little bit. They around but, a little bit more that But this time. is going to be much more wide open. Oh, yeah. This is going to be five wide, which I think, in my opinion, is a smart move by UTEP and the brass because I think it's a lot harder to find quality offensive linemen who are going to be able to go out to UTEP than it is to find quality receivers mm -hmm. and quarterbacks. You, if, if UTEP gets, let's just say, UTEP can get the 18th best quarterback in Texas in the class of 20-whatever. That's still a quality quarterback. Mm -hmm. I think this is it's an interesting shift. I think it's going to take some time to churn that roster, and it would not be a surprise if they go real portal heavy in 2024. But Scotty Walden, I think, you can ex uh, I think you can expect an exciting brand of football. My next question is who's the defensive coordinator? This is a guy who, doesn't, who, who essentially has been offense his entire life. Who does he hire as his defensive coordinator? It's a big question moving forward. But Scotty Walden, the new man in charge out there in El Paso. Hey, thanks for watching this clip here on YouTube. If you like this kind of stuff and you want more of it, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. And remember, you can watch us live every weekday at noon at texasfootball.com, Facebook, Twitch, or here on YouTube. And if you want more of the best coverage of football in the state of Texas, check out texasfootball.com and become a Dave Campbell's Texas Football Insider at texasfootball.com slash subscribe.